A well-designed garden relies on nothing more so than good planting design. But it's not easy. And whether you're a landscaper, trainee garden designer, or just a homeowner looking to improve their garden, I'm here to help. And by the end of this video, you'll have all the tools you need to know how to get it just right. So many landscapers rely so heavily on their hard landscaping skills, which look great but they often turn up to a nursery, pick out some really nice looking plants that are looking great at the time, and then position them carefully when they get back to start without too much more thought. Now there's a few problems with this approach, and it's so frustrating when just a few simple steps can improve on this and avoid those costly mistakes. A good planting plan relies on three key elements. First, good year round interest which is why picking what looks good in the nursery at the time really ever works. Then the right plant in the right place mean that they'll thrive once in the ground really grow well. We've got good composition. There's no point planting something small and slow growing behind a plant that's going to race to be six foot tall within five minutes. And if we get these three right, the garden is likely to be a success. Not just now or in the weeks to come or even the months, but potentially the years that are going to come through. And wherever you sit, whether it's your garden or your client's garden, that's gonna pay dividends. So where do we start? Okay, so in the original client brief meeting where you've met up to really try and understand what your client wants, um, you'll have got some key information here that we're gonna need. Check out my video on client briefs if uh, uh, you need a little bit of a recap. One of the first things I tend to talk about is color. And I start by asking about colour and whether or not the client has any ideas about what colours they want to use within the garden. If they don't, I might just make some suggestions of colour planting schemes um, or even look around their house, their home, see what sort of colours are being used there and start talking about these things just to get that conversation flowing. Colour is very much a key player here though and, uh, and it can definitely be subjective depending on the individual that you're working for. You might also want to suggest some colours because of the hard landscaping. This garden, I won us a gold medal at uh, Gardeners World Live in 2015, would have looked a little bit washed out because of the white and the pale landscaping products had we not used these zingy planting colours. If you've got a lot of dark materials, you might also do well to grab some white. And don't forget, colour changes depending on the time of the day. In the morning or even the evening, blues and whites really stand out. So once we know what our client wants, we also need to look at where we're working. As a professional garden designer, we will have done a site survey or at least a site analysis. So as part of this, I'm going to be looking at aspect, you know, which way is the sun shining at what times during the day? Are there any structures or trees that might be creating shade or a canopy that's, uh, that, that's going to change the, the, the amount of water from rainfall that a, a particular bed is going to get? You might think that it's going to be hot and sunny, for instance, but if there's a tree hanging over that flower bed, then clearly that's going to create quite a bit of shade. I'm also thinking about soil type here. Is it particularly acidic or is it alkaline? Is it particularly sandy or is it very heavy clay? And we don't have to get overly scientific here. It can be as simple as, you know, just digging a hole. Um, we can get a good feel for the soil. Is it hard to dig with heavy clay, you know? Or is it really sandy or stony and free draining? Um, this, is, this is a great start. And, and really get in there, you know. Uh, it's one thing to dig with a spade, but I also like to get in there with my hands, have a feel of the soil, see what it's like, see what it smells like as well. It might sound a bit weird, but it does help. You might also want to look at all the neighbouring plants, you know, if the next door neighbour's got loads of azaleas or rhododendrons, for instance, then it's fairly likely that the soil is going to be a little bit acidic in this garden as well. Equally, you might look at an azalea in the, in the neighbouring garden and see that the leaves are yellowing really badly, in which case, well, maybe that's the wrong plant for the place. It'd also be a good idea to understand how well the soil retains water. Is it particularly dry or maybe when you dig a hole it gets very, very wet? All these factors you need to know to design a successful planting plan. After all, it's hardly going to be very professional if your client spends thousands of pounds on these plants and within a year or so they really start to either die or, or just not do very well. Okay, so we've got our site nailed, we know what, the, what, what, what to expect there, we know what sort of colours we want to work with. Now we need to look at the style of the planting that we're going to use. 
Now, don't rush this bit because sometimes it might seem very obvious. You know, you might think, well, the garden I'm going for and the garden I've designed is a particularly contemporary garden. So I'm going to go for a really minimalist scheme with whites and blues, you know, contemporary planting plan there. But actually, sometimes contrasting an overly, a particularly contemporary garden design with perhaps a, a, a more naturalistic planting scheme can be really effective. At RHS Tatton Flower Show in 2021, I designed this quite contemporary garden in terms of its layout and structure for Cancer Research UK. Yet the planting in the outer borders was deliberately quite cottage garden and relaxed in style. Plants like geraniums, hydrangeas, garan, nepeta, luzula and verbenas were there to complement the, the harsh stainless steel and the cold whites um, to give the garden balance. Now the other thing to think about when we're looking at style is the amount of maintenance that's going to be required with this garden. You know, if your client works long hours but loves gardening, however, only gets out on a Saturday, for instance, for a couple of hours, we probably don't want to go down the cottage garden style of planting because there's going to be a huge amount of work there and all, all that's going to happen is they're going to feel pretty rubbish about the fact that their garden's still full of weeds, um, uh, when, especially when they're done weeding the previous week. Um, Equally, somebody loves gardening, you know, and you put in a load of just green, evergreen, sort of shrubby type plants that don't require too much. Apart from that bit of weeding, they're not really going to get the fulfilment that they want. So we know the site, you know, we've worked out what, what's, what the site conditions are like. We know what colour scheme we're going to go for. We've even got the style nailed. Next, we need to be thinking about the structure within the garden. And when I say structure, I'm not talking about hard landscaping. I'm talking about the, the, the backbone to the planting, the skeleton, if you like. Quite often, this is the sh the, these are the shrubs uh, and, and the repetition of these structural plants that are going to give the body that we can work around. So now it's time to put pen to paper, and I quite like just sketching here, uh, playing around with ideas. Generally, I start by putting in the shrubs and the trees, maybe some of the bigger, bolder grasses, and uh, don't just shove these at the back. You'll be seeing the garden from various different angles usually, so some of these can come forward, especially if they're deciduous or potentially leggy towards the base. Now, the thing to point out here, which I often tell my clients, is it's not about looking at any individual plant in isolation. Some plants you might think are a little bit dull and boring, especially if they're very green with not much in the way of uh, flowers. However, they might act as a perfect foil for something a little bit more exciting and jazzy in front of it. Next, we need to put in the mussel and the plants that are really a bit more likely to be the stars of the show. We're talking salvias, astrantias, echinacea, penstemon. You, you get the idea. I generally like repetition as well, repeating combinations uh, throughout the border every few metres. Grasses too, you know, repeating them, dotting them here or there so that the perennials can burst through them with spikes can be quite exciting. And then we gap fill. I like to add ground cover here uh, as of when I can. Not only does this reduce the potential weeding in the future, but occasional little bursts of colour from a dugu or weaving flowers from the vinca are a lot better than bare soil. So we've got our scheme roughed out now. What's next? Well, if you're a garden designer or a landscaper, it's going to be about the presentation to the client. So as we say many of these things, there are three key points to every planting plan. Firstly, we need a scale drawing of the garden or flower beds that you're going to be working on. Then we need a diagram of what goes where. And then finally, we need a key or a list of plants so it's really clear on what we're specifying. Sometimes I'll also do a schedule of the plants as well, which is a bit like a shopping list and ensures that nothing gets missing or forgotten. You can also specify sizes as well, which is really helpful if you're going to be going out to tender, as that way you know that the quotes you get back are based on the exact same product. Now this is how you create a professional planting plan. However, like anything, there's more than one way to do this. Um, and although it might feel like cheating a little bit, here's another option I use quite regularly and for good reason. So if you know you're going to do the planting yourself, and perhaps you might want a little bit of wiggle room on site, maybe you've got a bit of a difficult client who likes to ask why things are where they are if you've changed them by just a couple of inches, well, this is a great option. Um, this particular one's from the Creesbury Even and Care Garden, uh, I designed back in RHS Chats with Flower Show in 2019, um, but it's also a type of plan that I quite often use with clients, 
um, especially when they're, they're not going to be overly involved as well. Um, it doesn't show the exact positioning of anything. Now that doesn't mean that I don't know where I want to put everything before they arrive, but it just gives me this opportunity when I get on site to have a bit of a play around with combinations, move things around a little bit, and generally make sure that the end result is as good as it possibly can be. Okay, so this might not be an option that you purist garden designers out there like much, but for me it works uh, depending on the client, and for some of you it might work. And that's really what it's about. It's about producing something with careful thought and care that's going to give your client or uh, show garden or whatever you're doing the best possible finish. After all, in a few years' time, they're not going to be looking at the planting plan or how it was drawn or written out or the key or anything like that. They're going to be looking out the window. And what do they see? And if that's looking good, then you've done your job right. Finally, here's another type of planting plan I designed uh, last year, um, where I used colours instead of the initials for the plants as a key. Over the years, I've tried a few similar sort of ideas and would suggest that you too can find your own way of best presenting your plans. Make it your own, you know, but uh, as long as you make sure that anyone picking it up can instantly understand and read it and know where things are going, after that, and with what we've talked about today, you should be ready to go. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what you've seen today. Um, next up, I'm going to be doing a, a short video on my favourite planting combinations. So uh, if you do that, then you know you're not going to miss out. See you soon.